Hi, I'm John Messina, and welcome to another edition of Hey Coach. We have two special guests with us today. Michael Stutsky, the former athletic director of Sebastian River High School. Good morning. Being a regular on this. Okay? I'm telling you, huh? absolutely. And, and I think it's <laughs> because you're retired or because you have nothing else to do one way or another. <laughs> one way or another. And, and Michael, you've just been elected as the president of the Treasure Coast Sports Commission. Yes, okay? absolutely. And then we're going to talk about a, a project that the Sports Commission's putting on, a very, very worthwhile project. And here I have my good friend Jill Corey, Hello, Jill. athletic director at Lincoln Park Academy. Welcome. Thank you. Did I get you out of lunch duty, I hope? Uh, probably not, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we, we can prolong the okay, show well, a little bit. Okay, let's do, yes. <laughs> okay, just, you know, we'll start with you, Jill, first. A little okay. bit about your background, okay? okay? All righty. Mm. Uh, I've been at Lincoln Park now for 28 years. Wow. Uh, I was seven years in Indiana as a uh, athletic director and coached multiple sports. Um, been in this position as athletic director now for three years. And uh, I will bleed orange when I leave. And I will be there my duration, and it's it's hard to say that you know for someone to spend their entire 30 years at one school. That, that is great. I, that is. I'm very pleased of that. that yes, is, that is yes. great, and we both learned from our good friend John Justice. We did, right? yes, Dear who was the athletic director. But that's great. 28 years. Um, yes. You know, your school has a great tradition of student athletes. Yes. Okay, and and you know I think you're second to none when it comes to that. And, and last year, you, you won an award that, you know how I feel about it, it's the oh, yes. FHSA Freddie Roselle State Sportsmanship Award. Michael, you won it. Yeah. I was fortunate to win it a few times at Centennial or school one, not me. I just yeah. kind of stayed out of the way. But um, it's the highest award that the FHSA gives out, and it's the hardest to achieve. And to me, it's the most under-publicized. It is. It is. I mean, you have to go a whole year without any ejections from your players, your coaches, your parents. Yes. In some cases, your administration, yes. you know, <laughs> which, which gets thrown in there. I remember one year we, were, we had won it three times in eight years, and we were going for a fourth one, and we had a young lady that was ejected for a play at the plate where she didn't slide. And when we saw the film, we sent it to the FHSA right away and said, look, you know, mm -hmm. the catcher was blocking a the plate. They didn't suspend her. They overturned everything. But it knocked us out of our nomination just because we got that, that thrown in. So it's so hard to do. But, you know, tell me a little bit about your coaches and, and how they emphasize sportsmanship on that. You know? Oh, it's, our coaches are second to none. I, I put them against anyone. And uh, they emphasize first academics. Yeah. At our school, we we are academic 100%. Yeah. Right. Uh, by our GPAs, we are constantly being able to submit uh, to the academic all Amer all all state team yeah. uh, for each sport that we have. So the coaches are are behind the teachers 100%. If we get an email from a teacher that a student is misbehaving in class or whatever, yeah. the classroom comes first. Coaches and I we step in and we we help the teachers and. And the coaches are 100% about sportsmanship. Some of the su successes that you have had over the years, you know, which one kind of stands out in your mind? Well, I've I've been just AD. This is my third year, yeah. and um, it's been the number of district tournaments that we have won, the regional tournaments That's that great. we have won, uh, getting individuals to the state competition. Caleb Potteroff, yes. a, a four-time state champion. Yeah. Yeah. We had Jonathan uh, Garrity this year, a swimmer, actually a diver, who won a state championship. And it's just the number of kids that excel so well in the sports that they choose. This spring on April 6th, we've got six seniors that will be signing with their college of choice to continue their uh, athletic excellence for the schools they chose. So. Very excited about that day that's coming up also. And you know what makes it easier for the student athletes at Lincoln Park is because of their academics. Yes. Okay. You know, the way the NCAA guidelines are now, you you gotta have some you gotta have some grades, all right? You wanna go division one, you gotta have some grades now, or you gotta be outstanding athlete on that. Um, you know, one of the topics that Michael and I always talk about and we talk about with every A D is <sighs> This year has been the start of the free agency in high school. Yes. Yes. I, I know it doesn't affect Lincoln Park as much as it does the other schools, but I know Michael and I have been strong advocates against this proposal, which is not from the FHSAA, 
which is it's from the state legislature, who really said that you can go to any school that you choose right. as long as they're an opening, and people will find ways to have openings, and as long as you provide your own transportation, which is kind of simple with that. Um, you know, how's your feelings? I, I know it doesn't affect you personally, but, but right. you know, because your school, you know, with the IV program is kind of special on that. You know, how do you feel about the free agency in high school? My feelings are just like yours and Michael's. I, I think it was something they should not have done. They shouldn't have let happen. Uh, at the beginning of the school year, you would not believe how many phone calls we took that, well, can my child stay at your school but go to Central play football? I mean, that was what we were getting, and just absolutely Didn't not. that almost go through? It did. Yeah. It did. I think that, you know, and a common thread the three of us have here is that we, we recognize that they're students first and they're athletes second. Yes. My great concern has always been, and I think it's, a, it's one of the, the things that I've always admired most about Lincoln Park Academy, you talk about loyalty to your school and to your programs. And we lost that when the Florida legislature intervened and, and literally took the teeth out of the FHSAA in, in governing high school sports because now kids have and their parents have put themselves in this free agency mode. And the, the high schools, the vast majority, have been hurt by this because kids, you know, there's that old saying that we've, we're all familiar with, teammates matter. And you get kids that have been with a program two or three years and then they up and leave their senior year. Yeah. And, and so, you know, what all of that investment of the coaches and, 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 and of, of being part of a team is, is greatly discounted. And, and I think that's what's sad about this situation. And I, I know that your school hasn't seen it as much as others, but you have entire programs that have been decimated because of, of a number of the, the better athletes that have just said, you know, I don't care that I've been here three years. I go play my senior year here. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's hurt high school sports yeah. and very much so. And even though it doesn't affect your school personally, it can affect the schools that are in your district or, or right. down the road that you're playing. Um, I was looking at a newspaper from a county down south, and you can figure out which one this is, you know, way down south. Okay. And they had a, a preview of their baseball district. And they had notable hitters, notable pitchers, and for each school they had notable transfers as, as one of the things. And I was saying almost each school had two or three people transferring in. And, and to me, this is going to get worse it is. because, and I'm not blaming parents at all because this is the way the system is set up. Okay, you want a golf team? You got a golfer? You got a golfer? I'm going to get two more. We're going to win a state title. All you need is four, okay? Football, we're going to bring in a whole offensive line or something like that. You know, again, when is it going to stop? I think it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better because I don't think people have realized that you can do this. You know. Well, you're going to end up with elite programs. Exactly. Yes. And it, they won't be elite in just one sport. Yeah. There'll be two or three, and they'll most likely be the marquee sports. Correct. And people will say, "Gosh, why is this school winning the championships year in and year out?" When in a given county there are 10, 12, 15, or 30 high schools, and those schools have just been cast aside, and you just have a couple of schools that are winning it all. Right. And, and it's, it's going to stay like that. I, I really don't think that the individual sports have been, you know, impacted yet. I think they're going to be when people realize you only need, okay, let's get our four swimmers together from different schools, and now we got a relay state championship team. Yes. You know, or tennis, let's get two tennis players, we're gonna win the double state title, you know? And again, it, it, it's kind of hurting, it's really hurting high school sports. I mean, between that and between the club sports who are really digging in, especially in soccer, you know, and I, I think we know that it's a lot of the soccer coaches having a hard time mm -hmm. because the soccer season is impacted with the two holidays, you know, with the Thanksgiving holiday and with the Christmas holiday that you're missing a lot of games and a lot of these young men and women are playing in tournaments that your soccer season is really getting impacted. So this is something, you know, I, I don't know what's going to happen. I know talking to the people at the FHSA, their hands are tied. You know, it's going to be up to individual counties to, you know, take the lead and say, hey, we're not going to let this happen anymore, you know. But it, it's something that, you know, this is going to be the future of high school sports. You know? Well, I think you've hit the nail on the head. It's going to be up to county administrators 
to put the word out to high school principals. We're just not going to accept someone that knocks on your door. You know, take a look at your enrollment because for every kid that transfers in, there's, there's, a, there's a student athlete that's been part of your program that is going to be cast aside. Yeah. Whether you want to admit it or not, right. when it comes to playing time, student involvement, whatever, you know, some kids will say, well, you know, these kids have come in from these other schools. Why should I even bother to go out? You know, I'm not going to get the playing time. And yet they've been a bona fide student of that yeah. school district. So it really is a time for school superintendents, I believe, to, to sit down and, and collectively come up with a program of mutual respect that says, you know what, we're not going to turn the, the interscholastic experience into the collegiate or professional and experiences. Well, it's not even the collegiate, because just think of the NCAA in basketball men and women, and in football, had transfers without sitting out a year. Can you imagine that? You, just, you know, now they have to sit out a year unless they're a graduate student, which that's kind of getting exploited too. But can you imagine if they would just transfer it without losing year eligibility for a year? But I mean, th that's something we got to think of. But now the main portion of this show is, Jill, I like you to tell the story about this young lady, and okay. we're going to try to do something to put something together for her, okay? All righty, yeah. and I know what you're putting together is very special, and we want to thank the Treasure Coast uh, Sports Commission for that. Um, Miss Lane Chesney, one of our varsity softball players, was severely injured uh, over um, the Christmas holiday at a bonfire at a friend's house where 95% of her body was burned severely. And uh, she is still in a hospital down in Miami at the Kendall uh, burn unit. And uh, there was not much hope for, for Ms. Chesney when this accident happened, but the uh, doctors have worked relentlessly through many, many prayers from all over the world. We have had Facebook comments from Australia, all kinds of you know, different countries and uh, teams from Texas and, and all over the country reaching out because two of our young ladies in our physical education department uh, kind of spearheaded a campaign for the t-shirt that I am wearing this morning for Lane and uh, teams from all over getting a hold of those two young ladies. Um, Jacqueline Ramirez, who is our girls soccer coach, and Nicole Erickson, who is our JV girls basketball and assistant tennis coach. Uh, spearheaded this and have gotten these t-shirts out to all these teams and they're wearing them in support for Lane and sending good wishes and I ask that everyone please continue your prayers it has helped immensely she's doing so much better now she's able to communicate with her family with a what's called a voice tube she's able to speak with them she's been able to stand they've had her in a chair um, so she is improving daily there are occasional the setbacks with the fear of the infection, but um, so far it's it's been a miracle, and we ask that everyone please continue your prayers. And uh, she was an excellent softball player. Oh, excellent with, little I'm, softball, yeah. Our, our shortstop, and I gotta say, Eli with with Lawnwood, every home game he puts a big number six behind the shortstop area, and mm -hmm. our girls go out and they huddle around that and do a chant before the game, and it just gets you going. I mean. It, yeah. The emotions are there, yes. Yeah. Well, some, sometimes in, in, in tragedy, yes. you know, things happen. I, you know, Michael and I knew the athletic director, Chris, Chris Hickson, from, from Parkland Douglas, who, who yeah. passed, passed yes. away in that tragedy. But the um, sports commission has something planned, and let's see if we can explain the whole thing to our audience out there, especially about the Bank uh, Sports Awards show. Absolutely. Um, when we first learned of, of Lane's uh, tragic experience, um, the discussion within the executive board of the Treasure Coast Sports Commission was, well, what, what could we do? You know, the Sports Commission does a lot. Obviously, their, their, their main function is, is to promote uh, those athletic events along the Treasure Coast that are beneficial to all communities. Um, but we also are involved every year in recognizing, as you know, Jill, and John does when, right. when he was athletic director at Centennial, that we ask each athletic director to uh, provide us the name of a male and a female student athlete uh, that, and they're recognized annually. Well, the last couple of years we've been at the Sunrise Theater in Fort Pierce, uh, a beautiful venue, 1,360 seats, and at that event, which this year is April the 30th, which is a Monday evening, 
uh, 7 o'clock. Um, the doors will open at 6 o'clock, but that's when we're presenting the Treasure Coast Sports Commission Student Athlete Scholar Athlete Awards. The Florida Athletic Coaches Association Awards will also be presented that evening. But the thought was, what could we do for Lane? Um, I first uh, learned about her situation actually through my wife, who is part of Celebrities for Kids, which has uh, uh, put together a financial um, uh, assistance to the family, uh, all the commuting to and from Miami. And the thought was, well, okay, what can we do to further enhance financially support for the family? So the decision was made to find underwriters for the uh, Treasure Coast Sports Commission Scholar Athlete Awards, which would enable us to take the uh, ticket value of $5 for every ticket uh, and to donate all of those funds generated through uh, ticket sales uh, to Lane and her family. And so this year, the $5 tickets, um, we hope uh, to pack the house, uh, not just because we're recognizing scholar athletes on the Treasure Coast, but that each one of these scholar athletes recognizes that one of their own, because Lane was a very good student, and we obviously know, as, as Coach Matthew said, probably one of the very best in the stellar career that he's had, that he's ever coached. So here's a student athlete who's in need, and the Sports Commission has decided to donate all proceeds of ticket sales to benefit Lane and her family uh, during this most difficult time. So we're honored to do it. It's what the Sports Commission uh, is about when it comes to student and scholar athletes. Uh, so we're, we're excited about the, the evening. Again, Monday, April the 30th, 7 p.m. at the Sunrise Theater. Tickets are available to anyone in the community. Uh, obviously, we, we hope that uh, the folks at Lincoln Park Academy will, will show out and uh, show up in strong numbers because this is, this is one right. of their own. Yes. Right. And, and we're going to be able to publicize it, and Joey will help us through the schools. Absolutely. And publicize. Well, so, Michael, go, go through what, what exactly is happening that night, the different awards. I, yes. I don't think people uh, realize how many different uh, young men and women, student athletes, are going to be recognized that night. For sure. Well, uh, we have 20 high schools along the Treasure Coast, both public and private. And the goal of the Sports Commission was to recognize every school's student athlete. The award was set up so that athletic directors would make the choice on their campus. Sometimes it's not the most valuable right. uh, student athlete that you have, but that individual who's been a contributor right. throughout their high school career, oftentimes they are multiple sport athletes mm -hmm. we, we, we certainly look for those types of students uh, as athletic directors we always appreciated the multiple sport athlete now well, let me ask you a question before you go on about multiple sport athletes for, for many many years I was on the FHSA all academic team when we first started I remember Dave Courier who was down at West Polk and myself started it 20 years ago we must have had five six hundred applicants that we had to whittle down to 12 male, 12 females. Mm -hmm. Now, the requirements at that time were to play two or more sports. You were encouraged for people to play three, to have over 3.5, and community service member clubs. The last few years that we were on it, we were probably maybe 200, 175 applicants. And it wasn't the GPA. Everybody's GPA was still terrific. Right. It was the multiple sports that student athletes weren't playing. Mm -hmm. Now, I know in your school it's a little bit different. You do get the multiple sport athletes, yes. okay? Michael and I, our last few years, we did not. That's okay? right. And, and, you know, I'm sorry for interrupting you on that, but what do you think that reason was? Well, I think uh, in society we started uh, suggesting by way of the club sports programs that kids should specialize. Right. And so, uh, not to certainly pick on any one sport, but we'll use soccer as a perfect right. example. Um, the, the club soccer coaches uh, instilled a, a, a thought process, a mentality to parents and to kids that if you really want to move on to the next level, then you need to truly dedicate right. yourself to this sport. Right. And so you had kids that played their club program and their high school program and then another type of traveling program. And there was no room for those students to be involved in the other programs that their high school offered. That was one of the reasons that the Sports Commission came up with the Scholar Athlete right. Award. Because we wanted to see the recognition of the multiple sport athlete, the individual who was making 
year in and year out during their high school career a contribution to their school's athletic program. And typically they were not only a good student, as we all know, but they were the student that may not have been the best hitter or the best this or that, but they were constant in their leadership. They were constant in their sportsmanship. They were constant as, they, as the consummate team player, but maybe not the ones that were always getting the recognition. Well, here was an opportunity for a high school athletic director who better knows their athletic program than the right. athletic director to submit the names. So you do the math. You've got 20 schools, two each. There's 40 student athletes on the Treasure Coast that will be recognized. This year, the Florida Athletic Coaches Association, very important organization within the coaching ranks, they too select their student athletes uh, per sport. And so the, they've never really had anything formal uh, that the community could observe. Typically the certificates uh, were awarded uh, when the uh, schools got the certificates and they, they presented them to the students on campus. Now there will be the public presentation and recognition of the success that students have had in their chosen sport. And so we think that it's a, it's, it's a, mar a great marriage. We have the Scholar Athlete Award coming from athletic directors for all 20 high schools, both public and private. Now we have the Florida Athletic Coaches Association Awards, and this event celebrates the contributions and the achievements of the student athletes from each of the programs at the schools. And I, I think if I remember correctly, you also recognized the teams that got to the state finals or won the state. That, that is time. correct. Right. Absolutely. So, so which, is, which is, again, sometimes we get overlooked. I mean, this is a state, and, and you know, let's not kid ourselves, and I, I know you're going to jump in on this. Football is first, second, and third, mm -hmm. okay? And especially high school football might be first, second, third, fourth, and fifth, okay? And a lot of other sports, you know, because football is so, and it, it, I guess it has to be that way, you know, for a lot of schools that depend financially on the football mm -hmm. income, okay, to run all their other sports. I mean, you know, really football is going to dominate from, from August all the way until, you know, middle of December on that. So this is another way that we can, you know, I think a lot of schools that go to state tournaments don't get recognized the way football programs should. And that this is one way of, of doing that, you know. So I, I know you feel that way too because <laughs> yes. a lot, you know, and, and then, you know, again, when we first started, Michael, way back when, there wasn't the overlapping. That's right. Uh, right? There was always, yeah, you and, and I, I don't know how we did it. I'm trying to figure it out in my head. We played more games, but we never overlapped. I think because there's more sports now. I, well, yeah. I think yeah. certainly there's more sports, but for those of us that do remember yeah. when you had that week or two off before you. It was you, great. It was great. Everybody got an opportunity to recharge your batteries. Right. Kids got an opportunity, if they needed to, to catch yeah. up academically. That week of additional right. work in the classroom kind of got them to the point where they could sit with their parents and say, well, you know, I really think I want to go out for basketball or wrestling or soccer or whatever the winter sports would be. And the same thing when the spring sports came about. And uh, so I, I think we lost something yeah. when we lost that that little bit of a spacer between our sports season. But you know, you mentioned uh, the idea of the Sports Commission putting on this annual event. There's another reason for it, and that is that unfortunately, um, coverage of all of the sports teams and programs, right. uh, it's very difficult to get the kind of coverage that we remember 20 years ago. Yeah. You used to be able to pick up the newspaper or even go online as we do today, yeah. And there was coverage for all the, the newspaper folks. They can't do it all anymore, right. and they've been scaled down considerably over the years. Sure. So now we have this annual event where we get to celebrate right. the accomplishments of the student athletes. And if you recall, last year for the first yeah. time, we recognized a coach of the year, yes. and that's something that right. the sports commission right. has said. You know, we want right. to incorporate a little more every year to celebrate the interscholastic experience. I remember when I was in Dade County, Dade County was one of the first counties to, to do this award. And we had some really tremendous guest speakers. And, and one time it was George Steinbrenner. And, and, and we had won the state championship in baseball, so I was sitting up in the front and Mr. Steinbrenner was up and he you know, definitely wanted to see the baseball guys. And I'm sitting there, and this is a, this is a great story. They would call the nominees up say they had four or six nominees for each sport and then they would announce the winner and they would announce all the, the runner-ups too and it was a very nice way that they did it. Mr. Steinbrenner 
was picking the winners by the way they walked up on the stage. And I think he was like eight, at, eight out of nine. And I'm, I'm looking at him like this. I said, what do you know that I don't know, you know? And he had this big smile on his face. I like the way that young lady walked up on stage. And boy, that man really handled himself, you know? But it, it was great. I'm so glad you guys are doing it. Now, what just popped in my mind, I know why we don't have the, the week break anymore. The playoffs have been extended so long, right? I remember years ago, you'd play your district, then you'd play on the following Tuesday, you'd play a regional game, the Friday you played a sectional game, and the following Monday or Tuesday, you played your state championship. It was over in two weeks. Now, in most sports, and football you have to, of course, but in most sports, you're playing one game a week, week. Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And two teams are coming out of each district, which years ago, right? Right. Jill and Mike mm -hmm. remember this. Only one team would come out. So this is really extending. I, I, I know that the baseball playoffs went last year into the almost second week of June, June. And most of the schools have graduated beginning of May, or second week of May. And a lot of schools were done. That's one reason the attendance, you know, when we went out to Fort Myers, the attendance was very low. And I was talking to some of these schools. They said, we've been out of school, not just our seniors, but the whole school's been out for three weeks. They're not going to come back for, for something that's not there. But that, that's one of the reasons. But, um, you know, we're really going to try to promote this event. Thank you. If, if you know, it, it, it's something that, you know, I think the, the whole community wants to get involved. And it's something that brings everybody together. You know, um, and like I said, you know, we, we, you know, had a little connection with Parkland Douglas. You know, I, I've been there many times. Michael's been there many times. And, and you see, you know, the tragedy that struck down there and how that community is rallying around it. And, and we're going to try to help this young lady any way we can. And it's such a noble gesture from the Sports, Sports Commission, Michael. And, you know, if, if you know any way we can promote it, you got to put your thinking cap on because oh, we're retired now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so in the schools, if if you can promote it, but it's just such a wonderful, wonderful event, and and just to see all the young men and women get dressed up, and you know, it, 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 it's a special it night. And, and I I think that it's. Um, one of those events that, in the very beginning, we just, as the two yeah. of you know, yeah. I, or, or a member of the sports yeah. commission, just drop the plaques off and yeah. you present them. Yeah. But to see, as you just said, yeah. for kids and their parents to dress up yeah. and to recognize that this is a special evening. Yeah. And, and it, there can be nothing, I think, yeah. more rewarding than to celebrate the accomplishments of young yeah. people. And in this case, this year, we get to think of someone who is in need but every one of those student athletes know that this is an individual, Lane Chesney, who was a stellar student athlete. And we need to celebrate what she's going through in a positive way. Yes. But I want to thank you guys for, for coming on the show. Well, thank you, you want John. to it out it. a little more so you can meet school lunch hey, studio. Hey, we can sit here and talk <laughs> all day if you want to. Okay. <laughs> okay. But, you know, I want to thank you guys for coming. And, and you know, this is going to be success. But, you know, you know, I know success. Michael and the Sports Commission is going to do a great job. But I'd like to thank everybody for coming to another edition of Hey Coach.